Welcome to the Handed Down Kitchen, where we bring antique recipes out of the past and back into the kitchen. As promised, today we'll be showing you more of our Victorian cookbook and telling you as much as we know about it. This is the People's Edition of Warren's Model Cookery and Housekeeping Book by Mary Jury, and it was published in 1868. It would have been bought for one shilling, which it says right at the top of the book, which today would be approximately £2.70 GBP. When this book was published, a cook in London would have had a monthly wage of between £18 and £50. There were 20 shillings in a pound, so considering that, this would have been quite affordable to a cook who wanted to buy it as a working aid, and those with an otherwise steady income. From this pencil inscription at the front of the book, we know that it used to be owned by Miss Josephine Mead after April the 22nd, 1876. That's 145 years ago, and it's very likely that Miss Mead was the first owner of the book. Before we go on any further, let's set the scene. As I mentioned, this book was published in the year 1868 in London, which at the time looked like this. Britain's reigning monarch was Queen Victoria, who had by now been widowed for seven years following Prince Albert's death in 1861. So getting back to our book, as you would have seen by now, it was published a very long time ago. More than 153 years ago as of the date of this video. And as you'd expect, because of that, and the whole purpose of this book to be used in the hectic environment of a kitchen, it's damaged and delicate and this is how we received it. Now this is probably the worst example here. This page is not only unattached, but it's split in half with a piece missing. And throughout the whole book, a lot of the pages are loose, either through being pulled or the binding coming away. Now we know some of you will probably raise an eyebrow as we're handling the book without gloves, but just take a look at the edges of the pages. It's really far too fragile for that. The best thing to do for it is to handle with clean, dry hands and just be very careful. And as you would have seen earlier, as uninstagrammable as it is, when we aren't using this book, we keep it in a plastic punched pocket folder so that it can stand upright on a bookshelf without snagging on anything. So getting back to the book itself, let's show you a bit more. It starts with a nice big introduction, which I'll read you the first paragraph of here. On the lady of the house devolves the task of providing food for her household. It should be her care that no waste or ignorant misuse shall squander the property of her husband, most frequently the breadwinner for the family, and that nothing is lost by carelessness or bad cookery. She is to take care that there is no lack through fault of hers, nor any drawback to domestic comfort through injudicious rule, no neglect caused by the love of idle pleasure. So the very first thing this book does is remind the owner, who is assumed to be the lady of the house, of their responsibilities in the home. They must make sure that they take care of the house and cooking in the most economically efficient way, make the best possible use of food through good cooking, and that there is basically no room for fun, the management of the house and everything in it being the assets of her husband, and that would include this book, is very serious business. You have to make the most out of it, and ensure nothing goes to waste. It's about as Victorian as it gets. Well, we could talk about that for a while, but best to move on, I think. Another interesting thing in the introduction is a list of food that should be bought to feed one person weekly, which is as follows. Two ounces of tea. A quarter of a pound of coffee, if only for breakfast. A quarter of a pound of cocoa paste, again for breakfast half a pound of sugar, half a pound of cheese, half a pound of butter, one quart of milk, eight pounds of bread for a woman and 16 pounds for a man or a boy, six pounds of meat, one gallon of beer for a woman, seven quarts for a man, three and a half pounds of potatoes, and then it says, of course, this estimate of quantities must be modified greatly by the habits and tastes of the family and by the fact of residents either in town or country. And a large supply of vegetables, fish or puddings will greatly reduce the scale of meat. We then have a few pages of illustrations and written explanation about where different cuts of meat come from from different animals. And this is followed by a section on kitchen equipment. 
Now, a lot of our books have bits that list the things that you should have in your kitchen. I believe this is the only one we have that gives you a few options depending on the size of your kitchen. These lists are followed by a few pages with illustrations of the equipment mentioned, anything from fish kettles to jelly moulds, and it also shows a cottager's stove. This is followed by quite a big section on how to prepare and truss meat for cooking, and then we get into the main part of the book, the recipes. This starts with a chapter on food and drinks to prepare for the breakfast table. We've put a list of the main chapters or sections in this book in the description box, so if you'd like to hear more about any of them or see a recipe from one of them, let us know. And you can see how much this book has been used by the number of grease splashes on it, on almost every single page. Josephine, or any of the other previous owners, did in fact make a few of her own pencil markings next to some of the recipes she tried, but she was always careful to do this in pencil, not ink. I think it's worth mentioning here as well that there are quite a few recipes that are influenced by South Asian, mainly Indian cuisine, an interest that at this time would have been triggered by the British Raj, which lasted between 1858 and 1947. Now, South Asian cuisine is one of our absolute favourites, and although we're not experts as far as cooking them is concerned, these recipes just don't seem to be authentic. And here's an example. This is a recipe for a curry of cold roast beef or mutton. It says to cut some slices of cold roast beef into rather small square pieces and dredge them with flour. Then slice an onion, fry it a nice brown colour in two and a half ounces of butter in a stew pan. Then pour in a quarter of a pint or as much as you want of gravy from the meat. All gravy made from the bones and any trimmings of meat. Add in curry powder and slices of meat, set it over a brisk fire and stir it well for 10 or 12 minutes. When done, serve with a border of boiled rice around the dish or rice in a separate dish. So to us, that doesn't sound right, but as I say, we're not experts, let us know what you think. Now, as you'd have seen by now, there are a lot of pictures, which is impressive for a book of this age. Sketches of kitchenware, sketches that show different cuts of meat and how to trust them for cooking, colour pages showing the recipes as they're meant to look, and towards the end you have this lovely illustration of how to fold napkins in different shapes. The index is at the end, but out of all of our books, this isn't the easiest one to find anything in. As long as it is, it doesn't list every recipe in there. For example, we tried to find the jam roly-poly pudding using the index, but it's not in there. The best direction you have is to go to the puddings chapter. Towards the back of the book, you also have some adverts for similar books produced by the publishers Frederick Vaughan and Company that operated from Covent Garden in London. Later on, Warns would become famous for being the publishers of the Beatrix Potter children's books and the popular illustrated Observer books. On the back of the book, there's also this lovely old advertisement for Deans and Ironmongers that at the time had a ginormous shop in King William Street in the City of London, and it sold all sorts of homewares. And that's it! We hope you enjoyed this video, if so please leave us a like, and if you'd like to see more about our collection of antique cookbooks and watch us recreate the recipes from them, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell button so you'll be notified each time we have a new video for you.